case JX105 JXU and it's making a horrible banging knocking noise when you're in four wheel drive like the wheels just twitch and like the old track is banging and shaking so uh, I think we'll have to take take that drop the tombstone down under there and see what's going on Thanks to all the new subscribers that have uh, subscribed. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps. And uh, thank you very much. Got it in the workshop now. Uh, just taking the wheel off. Jack it up. Give it a good spray with WD-40. Take the wheel off. Put it on the stand. And it's all nice and safe. Next job. Get a clean bucket. And empty the oil into it. I'm not sure if this oil is going into it yet or... We're going to put some new stuff. This stuff doesn't look too dirty, to be fair. While the oil bucket's under there and draining, we're going to take the foil drive shaft guard off. Uh, it's only a couple of M8s. I think there's three on each side, if I can remember rightly. And then it's a circlip with like a muff coupling, both ends, and um, a bearing in the middle. We slide them couplings into each other, and that shaft comes straight off. Uh, just got my hand on that little stub shaft there and you can you can move it a lot and you can there's a lot of m flow you can pull it in and out a, a fair a fair amount more than more than i'd say is right so uh we'll, we'll get it took off uh, that's just the feed pipe i'm taking off there the oil feed pipe to the little piston inside that engages and disengages the four-wheel drive on all these tractors um it's four-wheel drive is on all the time um, on a spring and it's oil pressure that disengages the four wheel drive. Um, not every track, but most tractors. Next oil fitting is like a little stack pipe that you have to put on some O rings that you have to pop out. Um, it's a bit awkward to see and it's quite awkward to do. You have to get a little pick and pull it out of the side in order for you to be able to drop down that box. It's M12 bolts that all this on, 19 mil heads. Um, there's three on each side and it comes off not so bad. Also, there's a handbrake arm that you have to take off as well, the cable, because the handbrake discs are inside that unit. So we'll uh, we'll we'll get it dropped down and we'll have a look inside. It's quite a dinky little track to this. It's a bit like Meccano size pieces. It's, you could probably lift it off yourself. So, broke the gasket seal now, it's on two dowels, all loose, I'm just gently lowering it down on the trolley jack. Nice and steady. I've just got to sort of get it to come off square off them dowels and there'll be gear in there that's in mesh that you have to separate as well. So it's, it's on the way down now, nice and steady. It's not so bad that, it's come down nice. So you can you can see in there. Right, we've got it off now. Um, but can you see how much like backlash is in that? See before it starts turning that gear where well, that gear is then driven on another gear in the transmission um, but it's a pretty like a lot of backlash there it's like half a turn um, take this cover off and we'll have a look right i can't really see too much yet uh, on all the on all the other ones I've ever seen, the the four wheel drive is like on by a spring. Well, there's a hell of a lot of backlash and all that. Hold on, there's something down there. 
Uh, that's what's that. I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's a... There's like a... There's like a bit of a washer down there. See if I can... See if I can fish that out. hear it jingling about. Right, well I don't think that should just be uh, I'm blue pick it up. I don't think that should just be in the bottom. It's like some sort of thrust washer. I've not got a manual for this, I've never done one of these before. Um, so, strip down a bit more of it and see if we can see any more. I think the problem is, you see this movement here, I think it should be tucked in like that. But I think when it's working hard, I think that's staying, that's staying put, and there's a big gap appearing. And then that, I think they're coming apart and that's what's creating this horrible banging and knocking noise. But we'll strip it down and have a look. So, just the roll pin. And that slides out of there. Um, I've took that top gear out now, I've took the shaft out and these are the handbrake pads. Uh, there's plates that are on the four wheel drive shaft gear. And they've got like inter intermediate uh, handbrake pads. So there's a lot of surface area there for, there's a lot of braking power on quite a small track. There's a lot of surface area there, uh, which is quite good. I've got to take all them out now. There's, there's two like bolts that are just next to uh, where I'm putting the pads, and that's what the pads slide on. Right, can you see? We dog drive like that, and that's what does your four wheel drive. But you see how there's that much play in there? When they're together like that, it's meant to be locked up sol solid now with no oil pressure, and that's a really like positive drive. But because that wash is missing at the back, this shaft can float in and out like that and then it's only driving right on the corner that corner there is meant to be dead square where it's got a chamfer on it so I think when it's when it's working hard I think they're skipping and jumping because that thrust wash is missing at the back I don't think there should be that movement there and that movement is the same thickness as the thrust washer And that's meant to be fully engaged there now. That's meant to be in, the tracks are meant to be in four wheel drive. Stripping it down a bit more now. I don't think I'm the first person who's took this apart. Um, I think this has been apart before and when they've put it back together, I think they've knocked the shaft in from the back and when they've knocked it in, I think that thrust wash has come off and they've not noticed, but not quite sure how they've not noticed because there was that much M flow in that shaft. Uh, just taking the couple of seals off here now. Uh, took the stack pipe off and I've took that big block out, that big silver block in my hand now with my pick. Uh, that gets the oil feed from sideways and then there's two little like Teflon rings on that shaft that I'm going to replace. And then that sends the oil into the shaft and then that's what pulls the spring back and disengages the four wheel drive. So you only get two wheel drive when you want it. I pull all that shaft out now. There's the clutch with the spring. The spring keeps all pushed together and tight for the four wheel drive. And that thrust wash that was in the bottom fits perfectly, fits perfectly on that shaft. It doesn't fit on the other end as it jams up. It's too big for that other shaft for the idler gear for the transmission, um, but it fits 
perfectly on the back. So I think when whoever's done this in the past, I think the thrust wash has come off and they've not noticed and then put it all back together. And it's probably been all right for a bit, but then because it's worn a little bit now, it's been enough for it just to start skipping and jumping. And it would actually force that little chamfer there, it'll actually force the teeth apart. Um, but it was making a horrible, horrible banging and knocking noise. So we're on with the reassembly now, as I don't really need to order any bits because the bits are in the bottom. Uh, I've ordered a couple of seals, but that's it. So we've got the spline in, we've shoved the shaft in a little bit, and then as we push the shaft in, uh, we've had to line up some intermediate plates that I've put in and put the gear on. I'm now putting that all-important thrust washer back where I think it goes. Well, I know it goes there because I've had the parts picture and it shows a thrust washer on the back. So I've got all that shaft in now. I'm just putting the handbrake pads back in. Uh, and now I'm just going to put that idle gear back onto it. So you have to get the shaft in the gear and then there's little rollers there's not a, like a bearing insert, there's just like the rollers out of a bearing to, so you sort of assemble it yourself. You just keep turning it because sometimes it can go a bit tight. Uh, there's not a lot to this foil drive pack to be fair, it's a pretty basic one. There's not a clutch pack or anything, it's just two dog drives. So it's a bit primitive really and every time you like engage and, engage and disengage your four wheel drive, you sort of like smash in them dog drives in and out of each other. Got all them rollers in there now, but I've got to then I've got to try and keep them rollers all together, pull the shaft out, and then I've got to put the gear in mesh with the other gear, and then I've got to line that shaft back in without any of them rollers all falling apart. And I'm being brave today. I'm not using any grease or any Vaseline to, Vaseline to hold them. I'm just using its own weight. It's a bit like an archway when you pull the, build an arch and you pull the centre out of it and it stays where it is. It's the same principle with this. And there's a plastic thrust washer at the back there and there's a little like steel shim washer that goes in the front. So you've got to be quite, quite delicate and quite careful when you shove that shaft in otherwise you'll knock all them rollers out and they'll all drop in the bottom. And then you have to start again. But... This one, it's it's not so bad. Just got to be gentle with it, and a bit of luck and a bit of patience, and it goes in not so bad. And then once you knock that shaft through, there's a roll pin that goes through the side of it, and that just stops that shaft coming out. Giving it a bit of a turn there as I try and just just feel for it to line up, and trying not knock them rollers or shove the rollers out. But you'll you'll know if that's not right, it'll it's game over. Yeah, so we've got it lined up there now and I'm just spinning it and working it through. And I can come so far with it and then I have to put that shim washer in the front of it to take all the end flow out of it got it all back together now i've just knocked that bearing down into its housing got the circlet in with one hand yeah got the circlet the right way so in nice and in the groove that we've put new teflon seals on the shaft ready and then uh, with some vaseline and then there's the collar that takes oil feed from the side and directs it into the shaft. I've got some new O-rings for the union that fits in there. Yeah, that's popped onto them uh, on them seals, nice. And then someone's definitely been in here before, because I'm just showing you here when they flicked the old seal out, they really battered the side of it. They really dug in there with a chisel or something where there's there's no need for that. I just got my seal pick, knocked it in, right in the middle, and flicked both of them seals out. There's no, you don't need to start driving stuff through the side of them. 
you've just damaged all the housings and I've got the new seal now. I've put some gasket goo on the outside of it to try and smooth out any imperfections that are in that cast. And I've wet and dried it so it's all smooth so it won't rip the seal, but they've, they've really dug into that into that housing, which is a shame. They've got a dolly the right size of the seal, knocked that seal in all nice and tight. We've then put the tin shield on. I'm um, just checking it all turns. It's all nice, no playing anything. So uh, now we're back on up, put it on the trolley jack, gasket gooed it, shoved it back on, tightened it up, four wheel drive shafts now going on, uh, centre bearing, and now we're on test drive. Oh, we filled it up with oil and put new filters on it as well. Taking on a test drive now. No knocks, no bangs, no leaks. So I'm really happy with that. Thanks for watching. Well,